He Prince suddenly stopped the story and asked, Did you hear any footsteps? He asked. The two companions, who were fully focused on the story, said they did not hear anything. Alvarkadian paused for a moment and said, It's hotter now than before where we're sitting. He said. Something smells like smoke. Van Dye the van said. Sir. Is there no danger in this place? Alvarkadian asked worriedly. If there is any danger, Kavari Iamon will come and warn you. Don't worry. Said the prince and continued. Within a few days I had acquired the power to communicate with the goddess through facial expressions and gestures. Most of the time, my heart knows what she is thinking. Not only that, without looking at Amadarasi I would know that she is somewhere by my side. Even now, good, you immediately go and lie down on your bed. Be sleepy even if you're not. Hurry, said the prince. Like that both of them went and lay down. They also tried to close their eyes. But the longing that overcame them refused to close the eyes. While watching, a figure came to stand near the moonlit television. He was the same woman he saw in front of the collapsed mansion on the street. A very faint us came from there. Aromas Hivarma got up and went to the side of the balcony. The figure standing outside signaled something. The prince pointed to his companions lying in the room. It also got some response in sign language. Immediately Aromas Hivarmar asked both his companions to follow him and left the house. The three walked in silence on the old lady's path. After they had gone a long way on a path which was surrounded by trees and darkness on both sides, they suddenly saw a wonderful sight in the moonlight. Huge black elephants stood in rows, guarding a huge stupa. Vandiyadeva's breath seemed to stop when he saw it. The old woman walked towards the herd of elephants without any hesitation. Alwarkadian and Vandiyathevan asked, Have you seen how realistic those elephant statues are? Only after saying that, Vandiyadeva's astonishment disappeared. Yet his astonishment never went away. Standing close to each other, the elephant statues, arranged as if supporting the mountain-like stupa, each had two long tusks. Out of the hundreds of elephants lined up like that, only one of the elephants had lost a tusk. She went near the elephant. She removed the big black stone lying at its feet. A staircase was found at the removal site. As she descended through it, the others followed. After going down the stairs and going a little further along a narrow path, a hall was found. Two large agal lamps were burning in it. The old woman lit one of the lamps and took it in her hand. She signaled only the prince to come with her. The other two were a bit worried about this at first. But when they realized that the old woman picked up the lamp and showed the prince the pictures on the walls of the hall, their worries were somewhat relieved. The pictures that the prince saw on the wall appeared to be a series of pictures that told the events of a story in sequence. These pictures were also arranged in the manner in which the stories of the previous incarnations of Lord Buddha were depicted in the Buddhist Viharas. But these do not refer to the Buddha's incarnations. It depicted the story of a human woman whose face almost resembled that of the old woman who was now holding the lamp. So the prince easily knew that this mute woman had written her own history in pictures. The first of them showed a young woman standing alone on an island surrounded by sea and her father climbing a log and catching fish. Then, the woman went through the forest. A young man was sitting on the branch of a tree. He was like a king's son. A bear was climbing on that tree. Rajakumar ignored it and looked in another direction. The girl screamed and ran. The bear chased the woman. The young man from the tree jumped up and threw the work at the bear. The bear and him had a fierce battle. The woman was leaning against a coconut tree and watching the fight between the bear and the boy. At last the bear fell dead. The young man approached the girl. He thanked her. But she burst into tears without replying. Then she ran away and fetched her father. The netizen who came informed that his girl was mute and unable to speak. Rajakumar was upset at first. Then he got over his regret and befriended her. He picked wild flowers and garlanded them and put them around her neck. The two wandered hand in hand in the forest. 
One day a big tree came near the island. Many soldiers came down from it. They found Rajakumar and saluted him. They regretfully called him to come to the tree. Rajakumaran consoled the woman and took leave. He boarded the ship. After his departure, the girl was very upset and burst into tears. Her father saw it. He took her in a boat and crossed the sea. He reached a lighthouse and landed on the shore. There a family welcomed the father and daughter. They all boarded the bullock cart and went on a journey. They reached a town within the fort wall. There stood Rajakumar with a crown on his head in the palace loft. Around him stood many people dressed in costumes. Seeing this, the young woman's mind was disturbed. She ran at one pace. She reached the beach. She jumped down from the top of the lighthouse. The waves carried her. A person who came in a boat picked her up and put her on the boat and saved her. Thinking that she was possessed by a demon, he took her to a temple. The temple priest gave her Vibhuti and beat the Neem. Some great queen came to that temple to have Darshan of Swami. The priest told the queen about the woman. Rani was pregnant. She knew that the woman was also pregnant like her. She was carried on a palanquin and taken to the palace. Two children were born to the woman in the palace garden. Rani comes and says that she will raise one of the two children. At first the netizen denied it. Then she thought. She decided to let both the children grow up in the palace. She left the children and ran away in the middle of the night without telling anyone. She was wandering in the forest for a long time. But the desire to see children often comes. She came to the river bank and hid under the cover of trees. In the boat will come the king, queen, and children. She watches from a distance and leaves. Once a child fell from the boat. No one noticed it. She drowned in the water and took the child. Immediately she got drowned again in the river and reached the shore and disappeared in the forest. All these events were drawn in the form of realistic pictures by Kavik Kodi and Prince Arulmas Hivarma used to watch the pictures with immense interest and wonder. When the last picture came, the prince said, I am the boy saved from the river, you are the saver. He signaled. The old woman hugged the prince tightly and jumped up. Then she took the prince to another corner of the hall. She showed some pictures written there. They are not her life shows. She warned the prince of possible dangers through images and signals. Vandiyadeva and Alvar Kadayan were standing at the side of the hall watching all this. Vandiyadeva often compared Nandini's face with that of this mute woman, and many thoughts arose in his mind, doubts arose. He did not speak on that day to talk about them. They came out of the inner hall guarded by elephant statues. The old woman took them and climbed towards the top of the stupa. Others marveled at her physical strength. Vandiyathevan was very tired. However, he climbed outside without saying anything. Halfway up the stupa, they stopped and watched. In one part of the city a flame was burning. Aha! The ancient palace of Emperor Mahasena is on fire. Said the prince. Where we lay. That's it. If we lay there and slept. We might as well be food for the fire god. What makes you say from so far away that that was the palace where we were lying? The pictures I saw inside the hall spoke to me. Didn't you hear us? No wonder that pictures speak a language of their own. Only those who know that language can understand their speech. What else did those pictures tell them? They told me many secrets about my family. They also told me to leave this island of Sri Lanka immediately. Long live the language of images. O oh Vaishnava! My party has won! Vandiyathevan said. Prince! The pictures don't stop there. Don't you say, don't obey the roof while in Sri Lanka. Don't walk beside the houses. Don't go under the trees. All Workadians said. You're right. How did you know? They know the language of pictures. Ada Yen knows the language of Abhinaya. I was watching the Abhinaya expressions of the deity as their clan deity spoke to them. All Workadians said. Aromas Hivarmar said, Happiness, there is still one bale left for the night. 
we will climb to the top of this stupa and lie down for a while and sleep and leave when the day dawns. The next day at dawn, the sun's rays called Sular and woke up Vandiyadeva from his sleep. As if the real events of the first night were not enough, conspirators, arsonists, mutes, deaf, tree-climbing bears, demons, Buddhist pikhas, bell crowns came and tormented Vandiyadeva's dream as a single mess. In the light of the sun they all turned into magical dreams and disappeared. Confusion and panic flew. Vandiyadeva saw that the prince and Alvarkadian had risen earlier and were ready for the journey. He also hurriedly got ready. All three descended from the stupa peak. They walked through the middle paths and went towards Mahameghavana. In the middle of that Nandavan there was anciently a 1500-year-old, very sacred Bodhi tree. Many Pikhas and non-Pikhas devotees were worshipping the Bodhi tree by crawling and showering flowers. Prince Aromas Hivarma also saluted the Bodhi tree. Kingdoms in the world and the kings who ruled the kingdoms will pass away. But this Bodhi tree proves that Dharma will last forever. Said the prince looking at the other two. Saying this, he looked around. In one corner stood three horses ready for departure. Three men were standing holding the three horses. When the prince went there, all three of them bowed respectfully with bright faces. Prince asked them something and got to know them. Looking at Vandiyathevan, it was Mahasna's palace where we were sleeping that burned at night. They were afraid that we too had been burnt in it. Seeing us alive, they could not contain their joy. It is true that the 1500-year-old royal tree still stands. But Dharma has been dead for so long. Vandiyathevan said. Don't say that again. How can charity die while I am alive? All were Kadians said. The three mounted the horses and set off. They left through the northern gate of the city of Anuradhapura. No one noticed them as the festival crowd was still going JJ around the city. A near to the northeast of Anuradhapura was a small town called Mahinthalai. Makiandar, the son of Emperor Ashoka, first came to this town and began to preach Buddhism. What a blessed man he was! He did not go to conquer the country with armed forces. He did not feel the need to hide and hide to avoid being caught by murderers. Aromas Hivarmar said. That's all he was given. Vandiyathevan said. The prince laughed. You must never be separated from me. If you are by my side, any hardship will become happiness. Said the prince. Similarly any happiness will become difficult. All were Kadians said. At this moment they saw a cloud of dust on the road in front of them. The sound of many horses galloping on all fours was also heard. After a while a small troop of cavalry came into view. The ends of the vines held by the horsemen glistened in the morning sun. Sir! Take the knife from the sheath! Vandiyathevan warned. 